we are going to explore Safari for the MacBook. And Safari is not the only web browser available. You can use Chrome or Firefox. Safari is the inherent Apple browser for both the iPad and the MacBook. So we're going to explore some of the features. This is not a complete overview, but this is a brief rundown of the main features in Safari. If you are a Chrome or Firefox user, they function very similarly on the Mac as they do on the PC, and you can easily transition to that if you would like. The first thing that I would like to point out for Safari are some of the preferences. So on any app on the Mac, if you go up to the title of the application and go to preferences, you'll see that you have multiple options here for what you may want to change or adapt to make it personalized. Under the general tab, we have the way that Safari will open. We can change our home page or set it to the current. We can change our history, our favorites, and then where our files go. When you download a file from Safari, this is going to allow you to choose where it goes. You can either ask for each download individually, or if you choose other, it will allow you to choose a permanent location for you to send those files there. This is something that on the Mac sometimes might be a little confusing if you're first early on using it, but if you're a Safari user or you want to try it, you can change that location. You do have tab options, and tabs do open at the top on Safari. So they open right here where we see CNN, and then we see WCPS. These are where my tabs are. You can choose your autofill preferences, your password preferences. Your search preferences include which search engine you would like. So we have Google, Yahoo, Bing, and DuckDuckGo. You do have several security options, which includes your pop-up window. So if you need to block a pop-up, this is where you would actually go to do that. Your privacy options will include cookies and website data. Notifications, some websites actually want you to allow them to send you notifications and you can turn those off or on there. Safari does have extensions. I currently do not have any installed, but you can install them by going to get extensions. And finally, you have some advanced options as to how things will show up or what they will do. Now that we've finished looking at the preferences, you do have options under each tab at the top under your menu. Remember that out to the right under each one you do have your shortcut. So if I want a new window, if I want a new private window, a new tab, each one of these has a shortcut, but I can go there as well. As we scroll across under view, you can customize your toolbar. The toolbar is default set to the one that's in the box right here. And if you would like to add that, you could drag that to the top and it would automatically change that. But let's say that you wanted to add something that's not on there or remove something that is. There are two spacers that you have that you can put things in or move the space. So if I wanted to move this to the right, I could move this to the right. If I wanted to move this back to where it was, I could. Let's say that I wanted to add my home site button to my control panel there. I could add this here. But then let's say that I really didn't want to have my favorites there. I could pull that down and remove it and now I have the toolbar and the control bar is the way that I want it. You do have the options of adding a few things that aren't set to the default and sometimes you may want to use them. For instance, there's an option you can add to zoom. So you may want to put zoom over to the right. That way it will increase the size or decrease and it's an easy access so that you can view uh, closer if you need to. When you are done, you simply choose done and your control panel will look the way that you want it to. You do have several other options you can explore uh, as you move across there. The other thing that you can do with Safari is go to a reader view. So usually when you open a site like this on CNN, the video will play automatically. Notice in the URL, I can mute this tab so that I'm not hearing the audio or I can unmute it. The other thing is, let's say that I want to utilize this, this resource, but I don't want all the extras, the additives, the, fo the videos and, and the ads and things that are there. You do have a reader view, these four lines. So if I choose that, it will stop the video and it will pull in a generic reader view so that I can see the text and maybe a few of the photos. The nice thing about Safari is, once I have this ready, I can go to File, Export as PDF, and send this web page in this article format to any location that I would like, and it will save it as a PDF. I can then send it into another program, I can manipulate it or use it as needed, and it removes the ad, it removes the video, so that it's a little more workable for maybe the classroom or a resource that I would need. You do have the option also to share, and you, this is where you will go if you want to add it to your reading list or add a bookmark. You can airdrop this page, add it to notes, anything that you would like to do. It will capture the URL and the page, and it will share it in that format.
Thank you for joining us. Please check out our other modules on the WCPS training site.